He'll go off, but he's been a fine player for a long time. And when it when time passes, he'll look back and say, hey, my career was satisfying. But for him right now, this has to be very, very tough. Georgetown wins it now to New York and Jim Nance. And welcome, everybody, as this is the first of two to be played here in the West. The Boston College Eagles, seated number five against St. Joe's, seated four. Boston College in the maroon, St. Joe's in white. We are just underway here in the first half as St. Joe's has an early 6-4 lead in this game as John Davis has had a couple of three-pointers for St. Joe's. Granger, two, and Curley for two from the floor for Boston College. Gary Thorne, Dan Bonner, hello, everybody. And this one should be interesting. There are some great guards, Dan, in this game. Gary, one of the things that's interesting is Davis had 17 points in the second half last night. Curley gets two there to tie the game. And it looks like Arthur Davis for St. Joe's is picked up right where he left off on Thursday. Boston College got here over Valparaiso by a score of 73-66 in the first round. St. Joe's beat the Pacific 75-65 in their game. St. Joe's in white for the basketball. Here's John Davis again from outside. Rebounded underneath and put up and in. Good play by Domani. Demetri Domani put it in. He had four points in the first round. Gary, you hit a couple of those long outside shots. The defense comes out and defends, and that gives you better opportunity for rebounding inside. Here's Penn, one of those fine guys we were talking about, the good outside shooter. Does not get that one, and there's Davis with the rebound. As yet, Boston College has not been able to get the ball inside to Daniel Avery. That's for three. No good by Simmons. Penn leads the attack to Woodward. Abrams underneath, 24, there he is with the basketball. He's a real presence, Simmons guarding him. Granger for three. Granger went 0 for three from three-point land in game one. He opens up here by putting it home. Granger averages better than 10 points a game, or averaged better than 10 points a game coming into the tournament. He didn't score yesterday, so Boston College, very happy to see him get five early points. He was there leading the three-point shooter during the season with 52 three-pointers. Boston College has opened with the zone. Davis again. But I think they really ought to guard him. <laughs> well, he's three, three for three now from three, has three points, has nine points, and has three three-pointers. So Davis, who they've left out there to look, has looked in. Double teamed under a nice good defensive Bay. play. That's two steals in this game for Bay. Jared Bay, their leader offensively, three again. Oh, 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 oh. Seahawks. Yad Davis, who averages 14 a game, had 19 in the first round. He already has 12 points. He's four for six from three-point range. St. Joe's not noted as a transition team, but Davis gets open on the fast break created by Rashid Bay Steele getting it down the court. And Davis certainly very pleased with the way things are going early for his Hawks of St. Joe's. My heaven. Red hot. He could see it in his eyes after he made that first three-pointer. Here are the brackets of the teams here in Salt Lake City. The second game today we'll have for you in the West, Kentucky and Iowa. But it's Boston College with their victory over Valparaiso and St. Joe's over Pacific right now. The other games in the West, these will be played tomorrow. Stanford, Wake Forest, UNC, Charlotte, and Utah. We are at the home of the youths, of course, but they cannot play at home. So not here. On Thursday, Boston College had to withstand some first-half three-pointers by Valparaiso's right through, and they recovered from that, and here they go again. Abrams had the steal on that one. St. Joe's had the basketball. Woodward puts it up and in. Dwayne Woodward gets the two. Boston College on Thursday withstood that barrage of three-pointers. Bryce Drew made six in the first half on their Thursday night game, and they approached the whole thing with composure. Never really got rattled. They need to do that today. Now Davis goes in with the basketball and got double teamed, and Abrams gives him an elbow well after the play. Abrams in the lane after the whistle put a shot into the midsection of Davis. They go to the man-to-man -man defense, and Davis, big, strong guard, is a tough guy to match up with, and... Daniel Abrams got him because he was running his mouth a little bit. He had something to say to Dwayne Woodward, and before he got it all the way out, the senior leader, Daniel Abrams, got that elbow into his Adams apple, and that quiets conversation, I would think. 
It'll be Domani and Simmons going to the bench for St. Joe's as they'll go to the bench early in this game as they have done throughout much of the season. Terrell Myers has come in. Davis will go to the line and he'll get two and he gets that one. You know, as long as you stay outside, you can do some sniping, but <laughs> you're going to get close to Danye Abrams. You're going to do that talk, and he's going to let you know about it. And Abrams rubs his nose as though that will uh, take the official's eyes away from where the elbow had gone. Davis has 14 points in the first five and a half minutes. You've got this huge customer. They're so huge, sometimes they don't even know when they've received a shipment. Whose problem is this? yours. That's why you ship UPS, because only UPS captures signatures electronically. Then you can use UPS online tracking software to see your customer's actual signature. So when they say, we never got it, you can say not only did you get it, but uh, you don't dot your eyes. UPS online. Are you connected yet? At the Principal Financial Group, you will find the strength of our investment performance is your 401k retirement advantage. You'll find our flexibility will meet your insurance needs, and you'll find the balance of choice and quality you need in health coverage. For over a century, you've trusted the Principal for strength, flexibility, and balance in retirement, insurance, and financial products. At the Principal, we give you an edge. championship is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, the Principal Financial Group, UPS, and by Mountain Dew. St. Joe, seated number four, being led by that man, Yad Davis, 14 points. His season average is 14 and a half. Five and a half minutes, he's got 14. Well, he can take it easy the rest of the day. As I just said he could sit down and not have to play anymore. <laughs> Boston College for the basketball. Man-to-man -man defense for St. Joe's. Ranger to Abrams. Ten. Haskins in the game matching up against Abrams. Triple team. And he took it away. Rasheed Bay knocked the ball away. Bay now has three steals in the game. Bay's a fine defensive player. Leading the team with 52 steals during the season. That time they can't get it to go. Rebound Petrovic underneath. Had it, lost it, and it'll be deflected. Curly had it, but there's a foul. It'll be a Davis. pushing foul on St. Joe's. Arthur Davis going to pick up that foul. Rasheed Bay is only about six feet tall for the Hawks, but he is so strong. That's why he can go down inside and knock the ball out of the hands of Daniel Abrams. Errol Rasul checks into the basketball game for St. Joe's. Boston College with the basketball. St. Joe's with the lead at 16 to 11. Looking underneath for Abrams with the attention he draws. And if he's going to draw that much attention, nice job by Woodward to cut through. That's going to make him open. You throw the ball into Abrams and then you cut to the basket. They want Abrams. Again, the dish to Curley. And he gets it and got fouled. Good pass by Abrams on that with Haskins underneath charged with a foul. Gary, Boston College is an excellent passing team as Daniel Abrams draws the cover. There's Rizul. Mickey Curley steps into the open spot. He doesn't stand outside and watch what's going on. He sees the attention that Abrams is giving and he just steps into the open spot and Abrams passes in the ball. Boston College does a great job with their interior pass. That's Granger who is coming out of the basketball game. Curley will go to the line. Interesting early on the strategy for Boston College to take that ball down low and try and work underneath. And Abrams already has had a couple of discussions with 
two of the St. Joe's players. Curley's got seven in the basketball game now. Man to man defense by Boston College. They started in that zone. Looking for help up front. Abrams on the Haskins shot. And Davis shot them right out of the zone. So BC now in the man to man. That's 10. That's for three. I think they got a little piece of that one. Haskins came down with a rebound. Haskins had a good first game with the eight points. Two 11s left. They got it up. Missed everything on that one. Bay. This is really a great point guard matchup. Bay and Scooney Penn going right after one another. Bay did a great job that time. Austin College will play it in. A pin, not Bay, did a good job on the defensive end, and then Penn returned the favor. Scooty Penn hit his average in the first game, 13 during the season, points per game, 13 in game one in their victory over Valparaiso. Abrams comes out, trying to pick some curly underneath. Woodward open. He didn't catch the ball cleanly, Gary, so he couldn't get a shot off. Boy, Abrams taking a beating already. Woodward open that time, takes it, and could not drive it home. That time standing around by the Eagles once Abrams got the ball. Boston College now 0 for 5 in three-point attempts while St. Joe's picked up 4. 4 for 9. They go underneath. Abrams was from behind maybe or could have been out in front. Looks like Bevan Thomas. I can see you committed the personal foul. Now it'll be Abrams who gets his first personal foul. Sixteen, fourteen. St. Joe's on top. Good early pace to this game. Lamani. Let's check in with Mike Mayock. Mike. Hey Gary, there's an awful lot of jawing going on by both sides, and the refs just stepped in at the foul line and said, "Any more jawing, fellows, automatic technical foul." And let's not forget, this is an East Coast rivalry. These guys don't like each other, and I think you're going to see some bumping, some grinding, and, and probably some more talking. We'll see. The officials will try and get that under control early. Two from the foul line for Damani. He's got six in the game. Gary, I guarantee you one thing. If this group of officials told them to shut up and they don't, there will be some technical fouls. Good play by Curley to get his own rebound, but he missed both chances that time. Terrell Myers, fine game off the bench in game one. Goes for three and gets it. With a hand in his face in the game thus far, Gary, is sort of playing out the way we expected it. Boston College trying to take advantage inside, and St. Joe's with just that marvelous perimeter game. 21-14 now, St. Joe's up in the lane, Thomas, and he gets fouled. Hacked on the way through by Robert Haskins. That'll be his second personal foul. These are the officials who are responsible for keeping this game under control, and they are veteran officials chosen for that reason. Frank Scagliotta, the referee, Tom Rucker, and Mike Kitts, the umpire, and you're right, this is a solid group of officials. They're veteran officials, and I guarantee you, they don't threaten without following through. Here's Bevan Thomas, the senior, 6'8 senior, who had 16 points, well above his season average, 16 picked up in the first round. From the free throw line, he had a great first round. He went 8 for 9 in that game. And he makes the first one here. Not the second, however, and the deep rebound big. Thomas came off the bench, as you say, Gary, and had those 16 points, and most of the folks on the Boston College side credit him with saving them because they trailed for most of the game against Valparaiso, and Bevan Thomas got him going. Boston College won that game from the foul line, 22 for 29 in that basketball game. Terrell Myers, senior out of New Haven, he's for three again. Off the back of the iron, Thomas was in his face on that one. Woodward the rebound. That was an excellent defensive series for Boston College. Right underneath Abrams, and the fouls are coming. That's going to be three on Haskins reaching around. He did not start the game. Robert Haskins off the bench. Three quick fouls. Three on Haskins, 16 fouls. And he's not happy about it. St. Joe's has the lead. How do you make a great buy better? Start with 88 by Oldsmobile. Well equipped at $23,100, 88 is ranked best premium mid-sized car in initial quality. Ahead of cars like Camry and Maxima in a J.D. Power & Associates consumer study. To celebrate, let's make it better. For a limited time, get an additional $1,000 cash savings on 88 by Oldsmobile. A great buy made better. See your local Oldsmobile retailer today. Cozy, huh? What?
Pictures. Oh, what do we have here? Bud Light. Go ahead. It's got your name on it. I'll get my own. Nice. Ah. I'll take it for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. That was close. I was down on my last one. You are all abnormally fast, and that makes you feel different. Let's start with you. Tell me your name and why you're here. My name is Michael, and I'm fast. Uh, my name is Randy, and uh, I'm fast. My name is Kenny, but I'm not that fast. Kenny, you stole 75 bases last year. You've got Zoom air in your shoes. Try it again, okay? My name is Kenny, and I'm fast, but not as fast as him. Kenny, we can't like you until you like you. We're all on your side. My brother told me to watch his chicken nuggets for a minute, so no one eats them. But when someone gets the nuggets, it's hard not to try one. Now get five all white meat Wendy's chicken nuggets for 99 cents. Who ate my nuggets? Steve Thomas. Enterprise rent a car for my trip? Looks expensive. It's not expensive, Mom. They pick us up? Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Mom. Well, if it's not expensive, why didn't I get a convertible? Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Get ready. You're my father? Uh, yeah. For a Chicago Hope shocker. Alan Arkin guest stars with son Adam. All new CBS Monday. Welcome back to Salt Lake City, where St. Joe's is up six here early in the game. And you know, the mascot at St. Joe's is the Hawk. And the motto of the school is, the Hawk will never die. And as such, the Hawk, from the time he leaves the locker room before the game until he gets back after the game, may never, ever, ever stop flapping those wings. And what's the reward for senior Trip Whitaker? Well, he's one of the few mascots in the country that has a full scholarship. Gar? I don't want that job, Mike. Honest, I don't. He earns it, and we counted. Marty Aronoff, our veteran stats guy, says he gets 37 flaps a minute, and Devin Thomas gets a tip in for two right there. Thomas gets the two for Boston College, 21-17. He ought to get another scholarship for graduate school after that work. <laughs> he also ought to be a weightlifter. His arms, he's got to be the strongest man in the world when he gets done doing that. St. Joe's with a basketball. Those aren't very long wings, so he doesn't have a lot to fly. Boston College stays in the man-to-man -man defense. They started the game in the zone. Aggressive play on the inside. That time, Keenan Jordan recently in the game for the Eagles. Trying to defend against Razul in there. Picks up the foul. There you see the officials taking charge underneath now. They're watching for this. <laughs> and you saw Razul come into the picture, and he came flying into the picture because Jordan pushed him, and then Jordan got him again. St. Joe's keeps the basketball. They is their leader on offense, the point guard. Bedard has come into the game, and he is guarding him now, and he Bedard out front with him. Bedard is in for Penn. Boston College goes back to the 2-3 zone on the underneath out-of-bounds play. That's for three from the side. No good by Terrell Myers. St. Joe's has now attempted 12 shots from beyond the arc. Only five shots from inside the arc here. Abrams on a turnaround this time, and it's over everything. Right into the hands of Bay. Bay has had his hands on just about everything. So far in the Great game, move. couple of steals. Almost got by Woodward that time, but Abrams stepped up for three. Imani misses, rebound. St. Joe's has got it. Myers. Guards on Myers. They're not going to get away with those hand touches anymore, the way this game started. It's going to be called close at least for a while. Myers very quick, and Bedard concerned that he penetrate by, put his hands on him. And when you get both hands on a guy, that's by rule and a hand-checking call. No, Bedard charged with it. St. Joe's again possessing Bay. St. Joe's is going to need a little more balance on the offensive end, Martin. You can't shoot three times as many shots from beyond the arc as you do from inside. Bay for three was left open off the front to Dard on the deep rebound. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to score from the inside, but you've got to get the ball inside to keep the defense on it. Bevin Thomas. Team started hot now. Both have gone a bit cool. Simmons came down with the rebound. St. Joe's five for 14 from three-point land. Goes underneath, and they'll get the two. Harold Rasul underneath. Transition defense is going to be very, very important in this game. You've got guards in there for both teams who really like to look up the floor. They don't necessarily run up and down every time, but they can see opportunities and take advantage. You 
see when Abrams gets the ball underneath, there is nobody on top guarding whoever happens to be out there. The dart and a whistle away again. Got a push on the far side or a hold here. Looks like Myers. Boston College was back on defense, but they weren't really ready to go. And when Razul snuck in behind the defense, what a great pass by Rashid Bey. Bay having an excellent game here in the early moments. Five assists for Rashid Bay. Magloss comes in for Boston College. There you see, three for 14 for the rest of the team, with Davis four for six. Enough for St. Joe's to be on top because Davis has got 14 points. It's one of the reasons why Phil Martelli has won 44 games in his first two years. He knows when to put Davis back in the game. And these fouls are piling up here early on. That's seven team fouls now against St. Joe's. Remember, Boston College, 22 for 29 from the free throw line in the first matchup in the first round won them that game and they're going to get some chances here with 843 to go in the first half and Woodward makes both Boston College trying to punch the ball inside St. Joe's not quite the size and power on the inside of Boston College and as they scramble to defend they're picking up the fouls good strategy by Boston College Simmons Kamani they had a little room the running is good 25-19. St. Joe's on top. That is the first bucket for Bay and the first two points he's picked up. It's the first two points he's picked up, but he's been a huge factor in the game. That's a perfect illustration that you don't have to score to really help your team. Good defensive play by Simmons. 24 blocks during the season for Simmons, and he got a piece of that one underneath. Bay stays in, but aren't on him for three. He got it. Well, he heats up in a hurry. Gary, St. Joe's is a team that plays outstanding defense, and while they only shoot about 41% from the field on the year, they just have the knack for making the big, big shots, and that was a big one. The dart, the jumper in and out. Thomas, the runner, and he travels. Boston College unable to stop St. Joe's for the moment. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. When my grandfather surfed the Bonsai Pipeline, narrow boards ruled. Eventually, Gramps had a stroke of genius. A wider board for better control. The Ahola Ula, he said. Wider is better. Introducing the new Wide Track Grand Prix. Its wheels are set wide to hold the road. For more control when you're shooting the curves. It's true. The Ahola Ula. The new Wide Track Grand Prix from Pontiac. Wider is better. In 1948, who could have imagined the rage over TV, let alone a PC? FYI, Kemper did. And those who followed our long-term investment discipline found a new world of financial discovery. Like Kemper Technology Fund, where $10,000 invested in 1948 would have tuned you into $3.9 million last December. Ask your financial advisor about the thinking behind every Kemper Fund. Long-term investing in the short-term world. Michael, before the break, you were talking about your nightmare. The other night I had this nightmare that I was running in my Arizona Spiridons and everyone was looking at me, or trying to. I even heard this little girl say, Mommy, why is that man all blurry? I felt like screaming. Why can't people see the real me? I'm the guy who walks to the mailbox. The guy who chooses food slowly so it digests well. Can I stop now? Of course you can. You're gonna make it, kiddo. Don't you doubt it for one minute. The Michelin X1, with a six-year, unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin confidence in most driving conditions. Because you don't just cover a lot of miles, you cover a lot of weather. Can MasterCard unite the world? Well, the world can't seem to agree on a single language or even a single philosophy, but we can all seem to agree on a single currency. Gold MasterCard, accepted at over 280,000 cash machines worldwide. Brian, along with Clark Kellogg in New York, St. Joseph's putting on a three-point clinic this afternoon. Let's go show you what's going on elsewhere in the tournament right now. Let's go quickly to Auburn Hills, where Iowa State and Cincy are battling it out inside, 24-22. Physical game. Both of these teams don't mind playing in the paint. 
Iowa State loves to play games in the low 60s. That's the kind of pace we look like we look like we're headed for. That certainly favors a very experienced Iowa State team. And Cincinnati averaged 81 points a game. They got their work cut out for them. Ten lead changes and four ties in this game. It's 24-22. And that's one of those games that's as tight as me in an airplane bathroom. That one of the ones we thought would be snug. All right, the two-point game, 7.23 left in the first half. Let's go to college in Charleston, Arizona right now. It's not at a 10 down in Memphis. This is another matchup. Again, the teams match up so well. Both teams like to get out in the open court. Both teams not very big, but athletic. Charleston has more experience, four seniors start for them. Arizona doesn't have a senior on the roster. Thaddeus Delaney, the shack of the tack, has six points, four rebounds for the Cougars. And Arizona takes a two-point lead. Let's go back to Salt Lake City, 28-21. St. Joe's, we'll see you later. Back to Dan Bonner and Gary Thorne. Woodward will come out and head to the bench. Boston College down here, 28-21. Committing their fifth team foul. So St. Joe's retains possession. They've got the lead. Once again, zone defense for Boston College. They off the front. Penn will let the rebound go. The Eagles will take over in backcourt. Davis with 14 points in this game, leading the Hawks of St. Joe's. And for Boston College, seven for Curley, five for Granger, four for Woodward. Terry, it's been an interesting ball game. Boston College trying to take it inside. St. Joe's really shooting from outside the three-point line. Abrams has been the man. BC tried to work. And there he is coming out to get it and taking it in himself. And the foul is on Simmons. The well, has Simmons. Haskins came in the game off the bench for Simmons and picked up three fouls trying to guard Abrams. And now Simmons picks up his first foul. So Danye Abrams operating inside, even though he only has one field goal, he's picked up at least four fouls committed against him. And now he's going to go to the free throw line for two. He is a 72% free throw shooter during the season and eight for 10 in the opening round victory against Valparaiso. And he is a guy who knows how to get to the free throw line. He missed that one, but Thursday's game against Valparaiso, he got to the line 10 times. And he's played, this is his 122nd game, and in the previous 121, he's been to the free throw line at least 10 times, 47 times. That's more than one-third of the time, and when he plays in games, he gets to the line 10 times or more. And that's a way to pile up some pretty impressive scoring numbers. Biggest lead of this game had been nine points. The Eagles cutting into it here, 28-22 right now. Delmoni, Eagles in the zone. They're spreading the zone out a little bit. St. Joe's really hasn't looked to attack the zone inside, so Boston College spreading it out, trying to cover the perimeter. They'll go under to Simmons, and a nice jump hook over Magalhães. That's really recognizing what the defense is giving you. The zone spread way out, not a lot of help available against Simmons, and even though he's shorter than Magloss, a nice little hook shot over the top. Abrams has come out in the high post now. Bedard, the three, off the backboard. Rebound, up and no good. Magloss, he got fouled on the first attempt underneath. Good work by Magloss under there, and Razul will be charged with a foul. Gary, Razul couldn't control the rebound. He almost threw that in the basket trying to control it. Boston College, that relentless inside attack, and they're going to the line again. They will come out and get a break for St. Joe's. DC. Work from the line. These are enormous early free throws. They're six for eight now from the free throw line as a team. Magloss putting that one in and gets another. It's important that they're scoring from the free throw line because they have not been accurate from the field. Only one for two for Magloss that time. Now Davis came down with the rebound. 35% Boston College from the field. Back to the man-to-man -man now. They were on a streak here where they've missed nine of their 10, last 10 field goal attempts. Azul out deep for St. Joe's. Simmons. Off the front, nothing. Boston College, Knight lost with a rebound. Bedard has stayed in the game. Penn's also out there. Bedard not to shoot it. Dishes off. Abrams blocked from behind by Simmons. What great hands by Abrams, though, to come up with the basketball. And I think he's going to be called for a travel. But I'll tell you what, you can combine footwork and strength and hands like he has. He is a load to try to defend inside. He simply stumbled, lost his balance, and got called for the turnover right there. 
He is the heart of this Boston College team. Oh, been scoring and rebounds during the year. Already on this game, these all sevens for St. Joe's with three blocked shots. Got another one right there. He's their leading shot blocker at 24 during the season. Working around the perimeter, and Myers trying to go in and get cut off on the baseline, and Penn will be charged with a foul. Scooty Penn. Myers has hit a three-point basket today, and St. Joe's, as we've mentioned, has shown no reluctance to shoot it up from out there. So Scooty Penn hustling over, trying to defend the three, and Myers doing a nice job putting it on the deck, taking him to the basket, and drawing the foul. O'Brien facing the Boston College sideline over there. Monty can shoot from outside number 55 right there. Big guy. Get the nice touch. Pick up some three points and given the chance. He's not given the chance here. It's Looney Penn right on him. Lamani. Abrams was in front of him and he traveled on his way in. Boston College with a little matchup kind of a defense there. Some man-to-man -man principles and zone principles. And even though Damani was able to beat his man, sort of playing that matchup zone, there was somebody waiting for him. Nice defense again by Boston College. Their problems have been on the offensive end. Boston College with the ball and down by seven. Ranger, Penn, and Abrams. Penn for three. Yes, sir. And he twisted his ankle after the shot as he limps up court. Scooney Penn, that is the first points on the board for Penn. back underneath that double team. Damani for three. Bedard on the loose rebound after Curley had tipped it away. Abrams in front of him. Granger, offensive. Very hard to take it to the basket on Dimitri Damani, the A-10 defensive player of the year. Very good quickness and athletic ability, and he just got to the baseline and drew the charge. Hey now, <laughs> I ordered a new copier. This is better than new, my friend. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah. Oh, what do we have here? Wow. Enlarges too. Yeah. Oh, even so late. <laughs> I'll take it. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That was close. I didn't think I could shove this baby through. Everyone wants color that keeps up with the pace of business. The Xerox DocuColor 40 prints or copies 40 color pages in just 60 seconds. It's an idea a lot of people have been waiting for. The Document Company, Xerox. Honey, come here, come here. I got it all figured out. If we leave at dawn, we go through Bluff Woods, over this mountain here, then we cross Wills Creek here, and then, boom, we will be at the Hoffman's at dinner time. But they live next door. What do you mean, you don't even want to drive? The Monopoly game at McDonald's. You can win a Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition. Just buy larger, super-sized fries, and you could win this box. It's our best Monopoly game ever. I'm walking. Great, I'm driving, so. What do you want with your prize? So then Doris is driving it, and she says, but Elliot, I can't feel the road. And I said, but what do you expect? It's a luxury car. Anyway, we then drive us down the road. Have you ever been down? Bored with traditional luxury? It could be time for the supercharged Bonneville, one of the world's most powerful sports sedans. Do you drive a luxury car, Frank? You bet your ass got I do. Luxury with attitude. The Bonneville by Pontiac. Guess who's coming to dinner? Mr. Lucas, how'd you like to have dinner with the president? Oh, who's playing? <laughs> Guess who's on Cosby's CBS Big Comedy Monday? St. Joe's, a team that during the regular season was ranked 19th in the country in the number of three-pointers per game, using it here. They're four for eight right now. Take a look at our game uh, summary. The three-point field goals you see for St. Joe's. Turnovers. Took a while before St. Joe's had any. Bay and Davis, the leaders offensively. Davis scored those first those 14 points in the first five and a half minutes, Gary, and he has not scored since. St. Joe's has built the lead on the strength of their three-point shooting. They've attempted 18 three-point shots, as we showed you. Only eight from two-point range. 
Yeah. Well, wait, they're 10 for 26, but when you're going to convert six of those into three-point baskets, that really rolls the score up quickly. Uh, Davis, the man who started out with those three-pointers early in the game. Myers from the other side, and Penn with a rebound. Tony Penn, the offensive leader. DC continues to go down that baseline and underneath, and they get the two. Antonio Granger now with seven points in the game, and he's really a guy, if he gets loose in transition, he can score a lot of points, and St. Joe's better find him when Boston College is trying to push it up. Granger with no points in that first game here in the tournament, so he wouldn't mind having a big game here, and neither would Boston College. Boston College in that matchup zone, really trying to find the shooter, Simmons, a 40% three-point shooter on the year doesn't get it to go there, and Arthur Davis commits a foul. Curley came down with a rebound, and uh, Davis had to reach in from behind. Interesting today in the pregame warm-ups, as we sat here and watched, Davis got into trouble with his own teammates. They wanted to run a drill. He didn't want to do it or something, and they got into a little sh shouting match about it, and then it got a little physical, and some teammates had to step in and separate him from some of the other teammates. They actually had a disagreement with Duval Simmons, threw the ball at him. Yeah. But that's, that's what playing in the second round of the NCAA tournament can do. You get a little wound up and fired up, and I'll tell you what, though, he came out, Arthur Davis did, early and released that aggression very comfortably, scoring four three-point baskets and 14 points in the first five and a half minutes. He's gonna to need to find that offense again. Curley, and he goes one for two. And Curley's got eight points in the game for the Eagles, who have cut that lead to one. And they've done it basically on the strength of their free throw shooting. It's three-point baskets against free throw shooting so far. A 10-2 run right now for Boston College. But St. Joe's will try and cut into on this possession. Bay and Penn guarding it. Petrovich. Myers. Curly goes by. Abrams helped out. It's up. Petrovich. Nice block, Woodward. Petrovich up. No good. Abrams the rebound. And there, Myers picks up another foul. That's two consecutive trips down the court where St. Joe's fouls on the rebound after it's already in the possession of Boston College. The penetration to the basket, Petrovich doesn't handle the ball cleanly, gets it blocked, and misses the second time. Now watch here as they try to slap the ball away from Danye Abrams. That's happened once today. That's about all you get with Danye Abrams one time a game. And uh, beating a path to the free throw line, Boston College, Abrams. On the line again, that's 10 team fouls picked up in this game now for St. Joe's, and Abrams gets it home. Actually, that's their 11th foul, but they're over the 10 foul limit, so every foul from now on, Boston College will be shooting the two shots, other than player control fouls, of course. Abrams, his second chance here. The Eagles from the foul line have got the two and got the lead. On top, 31-30. They've been down by as many as nine here in this first half. It's been a while since St. Joe's scored. Good defense. Myers blocked by Curley. Petrovich. Davis. And he's not hot right now. Four and a half minutes of scoreless basketball for St. Joe's. One word is hot and puts it on for two. Boston, what a comeback. Boston College, with as well as they pass the basketball, when they get transition opportunities, they seem to take advantage just about every time. A 14-2 run in the last six minutes for the Boston College Eagles. The Boston College defense really has St. Joe's a little frustrated. They're not passing the ball very effectively. A couple of dribbles, sort of aimlessly passing it around the perimeter, and then as the shot clock runs down, shooting it. Bay, that three-point attempt, he was off balance on it. Thomas goes to Abrams, quickly double team. Penn, that's the three. Nice block out by Simmons. Make sure he had Abrams out of there. Attempted steal. Couldn't get it. Bay the other way after he got by Skinny Penn. Simmons, and he's got the three. And that was a big basket for St. Joe's. They got that in transition before the Boston College defense really got set. That matchup zone really creating problems. St. Joe's now seven for 24 from beyond the arc. And technical the foul. technical foul on the St. Joe's bench. Phil Martelli was standing up, 
I, I don't that. know if he's the one who said something or if it was one of the assistants. No, I think they rung up Phil Martelli. Right-hand corner of your screen, right-hand edge of your screen, Phil Martelli standing there. He's talking to the official, Mike Kitts, who's standing right next to him. And they teed him up. Whatever the appropriate term was, it was said. Here's Woodward at the line now. As Boston College, the free throws, 34-33 lead. Now, Gary, I'll tell you what, there's sometimes in a basketball game where a coach is actually trying to get a technical to get his team fired up, but with 24 seconds left to go in the first half, and in a tie game, he certainly, Phil Martelli, didn't want to get a technical there. The penalty for that, two shots, and then Boston College gets the ball. One for two on the free throw line, Mike Mayock. You know, Gary, it's interesting. One of the things that Phil Martelli wanted to do this year was go through the season without any technical fouls. He's gone this far. He had a bet with assistant coach Carl Warren that he wouldn't, and he just lost the bet in the second round of the NCAA tournament. And it cost his team a point. Time remaining in the first half. Abrams running out of time. Puts it up, got a block. Good defensive play again by Simmons, and that will end the first half and the good one. The free throws of Boston College have made the difference as the Eagles take a 34-33 lead at the end of the first half. Let's go to New York and Pat O'Brien. All right, Gary, you guys can take a break. We'll be back at you for the second half. Let's get everybody quickly to Auburn Hills, where Iowa State and Cincinnati, another good game this afternoon. This one a one-point game as well, 33-31. Let's go courtside with Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckner. Iowa State on top 33-31 with J.C. Holloway at the line. Cyclone shooting 50% from the field. And for Cincinnati, they're shooting 36%. Well, they've gotten a lot of good things, and particularly from J.C. Holloway, who right now has 10 points. And he's a guy that his high for the year is 14. We talked about the fact that he needed to stretch the defense. He got three foul shots because he got fouled behind the three-point line. He just picked up normally for Cincinnati, they are defenders. He shoot less than 40 percent against them. But today, Iowa State shooting 52 percent now. Flynn. That's an air ball and out of bounds. I mean, first of all, that shot is far, way too far out. But here was the save made by Melvin Levin here. This ball, I mean, he does a very good job just to keep it in play. And he gets it to Damon Flynn, who just shot an air ball. First of all, I thought he shot it too far out. If you look at it, a three-ball shooter on Devin Willoughby, I'm sure they'll try to get him a shot. Damon Flynn, prior to that shot, three of three from the arc. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will have all the tournament news for you, plus scores and highlights and live look-ins and action going on around the NCAA tournament. That's coming up on Finzoil at the half. So a 20-second timeout called 35-31. Tim Floyd's team leading, and Tim Floyd, he comes from a coaching family. His father, Lee, was the head coach at Southern Mississippi for 14 years, and his son, really doing a good job, turned down the job at LSU. They had pretty much offered it to him. He has coaching experience in the state of Louisiana, coaching at New Orleans. He's, he's well thought of as a, a coach, one of the, the outstanding young coaches as you take a look at the file that we have on Tim Floyd. Talked to him yesterday. I mean, he knows precisely what he wants to get done. Like a lot of coaches, the, the difference is he's able to get his guys to do it, teach them the, the little ways, the small things. Holloway. Inside. Pratt posting up. He pops out, gets it back. Johnson puts it on the deck. Cut off nicely by Ruben Patterson. Lobbed inside. Kenny Pratt couldn't hang on. Saved it. Eight to shoot on the shot on the shot clock. Big hop inside. Pratt fade away and it rattles down. He did a very good job of taking his time. And Devin Willoughby was the one that the head really helped him. Because Devin Willoughby got it to him in a position where he could make a decision as to whether or not he needed to get uh, a quick shot or not, and he took his time. Kenny Pratt, 11 first half points for the senior from Taft High School out of Chicago. Here's Levitt. 
should have taken that shot, but Levitt stepped out and took it. Melvin Levitt, sophomore from Cleveland. One of the high risers on this Cincinnati team. 39-inch vertical. 19 seconds to go. This is where they like to spread you out. And really what they want to get out of it is a foul if they can. That's all I would say wants out of it. They can get you to foul them. That's what they want. Crossover. Pratt to the cup. Pulls up. <laughs> Follow no good by Johnson. Two seconds on the clock. And it's off the side of the rim. So we head into halftime, Iowa State, the number six seed, leading Cincinnati 37-34. Pat O'Brien, Clark Kellogg will be along with Finzoil at the half right after this message and a word from your local station. Monday Super Bowl MVP Desmond Howard showboats with Raymond. Hey, show me what you got. I didn't come with much. Show me something. Everybody loves Raymond CBS Monday. <laughs> CBS. Welcome home. From Western New York's only 24-hour news channel, this is a News 4 update. Good afternoon, I'm Mary Murray. Thousands of people along the Ohio River Valley are cleaning up as floodwaters continue to recede. This weekend's dry weather is speeding the process along. The National Weather Service says flood conditions may persist in some areas through the week. We'll have more news in one hour on your 24-hour news channel. Hey, Flash, save it for the game. Trying to talk to everyone who calls you, that's hard. Choosing just the calls you want to take, that's easy. With caller ID with name from 9X. The display box shows you the name and number of your incoming calls. Yes, you want to talk to her? No, it's not a good time, honey. And stores the time and date, so you can see who calls when you're out. Even if they don't leave a message. Do we need the dinosaur? Yeah, we need the dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, good luck, dinosaur. Honey, it's Russell. Oh. I said we take uh, Danny to the game. But he's on the other team. He's on the other team. But he's your best friend. Yeah. Russell, five minutes. Order during 9X Connection Days and we'll connect you for free. We'll also tell you how you could save over $60 on the box. Just call 1-800-459X. Now you can take the calls you want when you want them. Did you call a chimney sweep? They don't have a chimney. I call, George. Thank you. Call or ID with name from 9X. 1-800-459X. Name brand mattresses, cool futon frames, lovely day beds, sturdy bunk beds, and this futon room grouping are all marked down this week at City Mattress. Game and a two-point game right here on CBS. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. Formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Our research staff there, pretty good basketball this afternoon. Yes, Pat O'Brien along with Clark Kellogg watching the games along with you. Let's get you up to date on what's going on right now. Iowa State and Cincinnati at the half. Iowa State 37, Cincinnati 34. Balance scoring for Iowa State. Three guys in double digits already. Cato doing a nice job inside. All right. Uh, out in the west, second round action. Boston College and St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's jumped out early with all those three-pointers, and then BC came back. They lead by one at halftime. BC doing a job drawing fouls and getting to the free-throw line in that first half. All right, down in Memphis, uh, 2.45 left in the first half, and Arizona leads the College of Charleston 33-29. to Let's go courtside right now with the Ryan Express. Tim Ryan and Al McGuire. Rodney Connor returns for the College of Charleston. Sixth team foul against Arizona. 2.43 left in the first half. A four-point game. Wildcats on top. It's been a back-and-forth seesaw battle. This is Anthony Johnson. Stacey Harris inside. Nice hand by Davison that time. Weber not able to get the shot away. Bibby back outside for Terry. Good movement by the cat. This is Dickerson. 
Laney's sitting out because he has two fouls. They want to pick up his third foul in the first half. I thought Davidson should go over Connor. Bibby for three off the front iron. Into the hands of Dickerson, has it knocked away. Charleston recovers. This is Shane McCravey. Harris buries a three. Oh, that was a dynamite shot. He hit that one bending towards the rim. All right, and so 33-32, our score in the first half. We'll keep you up to date on this game as the day progresses. Remind you that tonight here on CBS, two of the last two national champions in action, Kentucky and Iowa, about 7.06. And then Xavier and UCLA uh, at the same time. And we'll have those games for you live right here on CBS. Thanks for watching Penn's All at the Half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS for all of us. We hope you're enjoying the games and the good ones they are. Pennzoil at the Half was sponsored by Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop-go Pennzoil. At Pennzoil, we know brutal driving doesn't just take place on a racetrack. It begins at the end of your driveway. You stop, you go. You stop, you go. If this reminds you of your commute, we recommend you use Pennzoil motor oil. Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop and go driving. Morning, Bob. Morning, Henry. Stop, go, Pennzoil. On the court, when someone's talking trash, they want to take you out your game. If you sweat it, they win. It's the same on the street, but the risk is greater. When someone gets you heated, don't feed into it. You don't have to fight. Be strong and in control. Walk away. Walk away. You'll get respect and live. Tell about it. So, yo, avoid the drama. Squash. Squash. This message provided by the NCAA. Today's college student athletes face unparalleled pressures. The NCAA and its members provide the tools to help student athletes meet the challenges of life beyond the playing field through the Champs Life Skills Program. This program seeks to assure student athletes of success academically, athletically, and emotionally. The Champs Life Skills Program, preparing the whole person. This message provided by the NCAA. You want to play sports at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. While you're rocking on the road to the Final Four, jump on the Information Expressway. CBS Sports is online with the breaking news and the latest scores at cbs.sportsline.com. The Western Region and the second round, the Boston College Eagles at the half leading St. Joe's 34-33. And we'll return to Salt Lake City after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive of the NCAA AA Basketball Championship. A fellow came in the other day, knew exactly what he wanted, but I didn't have it. So I told him I'd make a few calls. Yeah, I'll hold. Don't have any. No luck, huh? You've got one? I'll be there first thing in the morning. Hey, Bob, want to go for a drive? It took some time, but we found what he wanted. Although getting it took even more time, because we had to bring it back from a dealership a couple of states away. He was pleased we went so out of our way for a used car. I told him we did the same thing we would have done for a new car. Or Saturn, for that matter. Welcome home. Do you believe in ghosts? No! On March 28, meet the superstar. Get your thumb out of my eye. Who's supernatural? <laughs> Marlon Way. <laughs> Bucket it, man. You're bucking. Oh! Kadeem Hardison. Oh! The Sixth Man. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 28th. Are you tired of waking up feeling dependent on glasses or contacts? Imagine being able to see clearly, to have the freedom to do the things you love to do without the hassle of contacts or glasses. 
Now there's a technique that has safely and effectively restored the vision of nearsighted people worldwide. One that uses gentle pulses of laser light. LCA Vision is a leader in laser vision treatment, providing laser corrective vision to thousands of clients across North America. 97% of our clients who qualify for the procedure achieve 20-40 vision or better. How good is that? This good. Imagine waking up and seeing the world the way it was meant to be seen, without glasses, without contacts. Call LCA Vision Laser Associates at 1-800-243-EYES to find out more or to arrange for a consultation. LCA Vision Laser Associates of Buffalo and Fort Erie. Wake up and see the world. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet. Budweiser. Best Western. And by Nike. Welcome back to Salt Lake City, everybody. We're at the half. Boston College leading it by one. Mike Mayock? Yeah, I've got Coach Phil Martelli. And, Coach, I know one of your goals this year was not to get a technical foul, and I heard you yelling 15-4. Explain that. Well, it's 15 foul shots to four, uh, but when you look at the stat sheet, and we've taken 24 threes, we have to take the ball inside and, uh, you know, play a little bit more of a power game. It's not really our game, but we do have to play some of that today. Okay, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Gary Thorne, take it away. Well, there you see the uh, strategy we're going to see in the second half for St. Joe's of Boston. In college getting all those free throws that's the reason they're up by one Phil Martelli is showing you that he can count the free throws but he didn't know until he got in the locker room at halftime that they had 24 three-point baskets and that's really been the difference in the game Gary St. Joe's has con concentrated almost entirely on the perimeter game Boston College has gone inside and that is why you see the free throw differential Boston College attempting making 10 of 15 St. Joe's 4 of 4 the three-point field goal 7 for 24 but that's how you can shoot 31 percent and still only trail in the game by one. St. Joe's had only two field goals in the last eight minutes of play in that first half. So that's a huge differential. Boston College seated number five here in the West while St. Joe's was seated four on the AP poll. St. Joe's 12th and Boston College 23rd. Two of the top 25 teams. St. Joe's will get possession as Domani will be playing it in. And you know, Gary, I just saw Phil Martelli walk to Mike Kitts, the official that called the technical foul on him, and say, I'm sorry. How often do you see a head basketball coach do that? Now, I know he's trying. He doesn't want to get in trouble in the second half, but I don't know that I've ever seen a coach do that. I think, no, he says that he means it more than just the strategy of trying to protect himself. St. Joe's will start going for three outside and uh, will not convert on it if Bay missed that one. Rebounding effort. Coming away with an underneath Mr. Granger. You know what frustrates a basketball coach? They went in the locker room and they talked at halftime about trying to get the ball inside. And the first shot of the second half is a three. Never fails, does it? No matter what you say. Boston College with the basketball. Granger, Woodward, Abrams, man to man defense. Woodward dishes off and avoids the foul, too. Granger! Well, they're getting some help from the guy who didn't score in that first round. Uh, he has come up with 10 points in this one. The Boston College Eagles taking advantage of uh, foul shots have a 37-33 lead just underway here in the second half. They are the lower seed in the West, BC fifth, St. Joe's fourth. An interesting game, though, with different strategies, Dan. Very interesting game. St. Joe's attempted 24 three-point shots in the first half. Both of their shots in the second half have been three-point shots. Boston College going, going inside, and it's been Mickey Curley doing most of the damage with eight first-half points. There's Abrams going for two. Oh, nice rebound, Granger. What a game he's having. A great opportunity. Granger's five for five now from the floor. The player for BC who did not score in the opening round has 12 points in this game, and the Eagles have their biggest lead of the game. As they are up now by six, they had trailed by as many as nine. A big swing for the Eagles. I think the score in the game was 30 to 21. And there's another three-point shot in the second half. St. Joe's relying exclusively on the three-pointer. I think you've got to give the Boston College defense some credit for forcing them out there. Woodward missing that time. St. Joe's, Bay, their leader, brings it up. Petrovich with a pick for him. 
Back on top, another pick. Simmons. St. Joe's. A little disoriented here. It's intercepted. Woodward. Curling. He stuffs it all. The Eagles are flying. Just a very poor pass by Petrovich. St. Joe's looks very disoriented on the offensive end. Boston College with a 7-0 run to start the second half. Excellent passing by Boston College. They're doing a great job working the backboards. And you know, Gary, when you get into a situation where you're not moving the ball, you're not going to get very many second-chance opportunities or fast-break opportunities. And we just saw Boston College get both of them right there. Curly now with 10. Gloria Davis is leading St. Joe's 14 points, including four from three-point range. He got those in the first five and a half minutes and has not scored since. And Boston College with this little matchup zone, now they're a little pressure extending the defense. They have really hurt the St. Joe's offense. Petrovich missing that one. Curley was out on him. And now Boston College is controlling the rebounds. Quickly on the defensive boards, giving them only the one chance. Woodward. Gary St. Joe's is basically lined up around the perimeter shooting the ball. There's nobody inside. And the St. Joe's Hawks are going to have to rely on their defense to try to create some easier opportunities. Phil Martelli's squad forced 17 turnovers, nine of those coming on steals in the first round win against Pacific, and they're going to have to get that kind of a defensive effort to get back into this game. Abrams on the baseline for Boston Collar. Loves to work it in. Davis. Simmons was there to knock it away. Good play by Simmons. And that creates a transition opportunity with Boston College back. Nice pass! Dished it underneath and they'll get the two. Good pass by Bay to Razul. When you get transition, even though Boston College was back and they looked like they were in pretty good shape, you're turning around trying to find guys, and there's opportunities such as that one. Maybe we will see St. Joe's try and take it in a little deeper. Abrams underneath, double teamed, and a whistle. He got hacked at and shoved from behind, and Simmons. We talked his third foul. We talked about St. Joe's on the defensive end. They create a transition opportunity. Now they get something else that they haven't been able to get, and that is penetration on the dribble, and that results in the easy basket on the inside. Those who have tried to guard Abrams for St. Joe's have run into foul trouble in this team. And they get the two underneath and a whistle. And another foul. Simmons, Simmons again, I think. If it is, he's got four. Abrams is just a bull on the inside. Abrams has seven points in the game. Now Simmons hits him right there, then gets him again, and then gets him another time. So Simmons got three for the price of one that time, but Abrams... Haskins has come in the game for Simmons, who's got four, but Haskins himself has three. All against Simmons. All against Abrams, rather, and Abrams... Has eight in the game. Haskins, 35. Haskins is an inch taller than Abrams, but he gives up 55 pounds. Big body underneath there. Abrams creates opportunities for himself by just taking up a whole lot of space and then moving through it. Good work of the basketball to Haskins. Kept up, no good. Rebound goes out of bounds off Haskins. And it'll be a Boston College ball. Gary, it wasn't a successful trip down the court for St. Joe's that time, but a little bit of movement of the basketball, some slight penetration, and they have an opportunity at the offensive rebound. Much better looking offensive series for St. Joe's. Abrams will pick it up. And you can expect that Boston College will look to try to get it into Abrams. Abrams, finding the lane himself, 360 move. Fairly quiet in the first half, only one field goal, hit three free throws for five points, but he's aggressively seeking the basketball. Boston College has their biggest lead of the game, having trailed by nine in the first half, they're up by 11. Davis finally gets back into the offense. And Hurt out there, Davis ran into his own man after taking that shot. Rasul, I think, may have gotten his wrist jammed, or fingers. He asked for the timeout. So St. Joe's got to find a way to get the offense going, trailing here. It's a great American tradition, the family reunion. 
know it's a long drive. We're Americans. We pioneered. We frontiered. We invented the Malibu. A car so carefully crafted, its chassis is lubed for life. It'll go up to 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. So hit the road. Go see your kin. Bring him a ham. It's the car you knew America could build. The brand new Chevy Malibu. I'll take you there. that changed driving forever. The all-season Goodyear Aquatread with the advanced deep groove aqua channel that sweeps water away for serious traction in the wet, especially in braking. Goodyear Aquatread. While she waits for the Supreme Court to decide whether a sitting president can be sued for sexual harassment, Paula Jones tells all to Ed Bradley, Sunday on 60 Minutes. Boston College has jumped out to the 46-37 lead in this game. And we had a stoppage of action based upon an injury. Here Davis drives inside. Those are his first points in 19 minutes. And the inside penetration, and just at the right of your screen, you watch him collide with number 24, Harold Razul. He comes in and just sort of jams his fingers and his wrist into Davis's back. Penn's got the basketball. St. Joe's. Trying to up their defensive pressure now. Granger. That's what they need. A couple of misses and a couple of rebounds. Davis got the rebound. Gary, you said it correctly. They're trying to up their defensive pressure, and that's where they're going to have some success. And they're also going to have some success, I think, trying to take the ball to the basket, Davis even though they missed that shot. Davis trying to go underneath that time, but Granger was there to pull down the rebound. Abrams, the dish, after they sagged in. Woodward didn't get it. Granger. Oh, what a hell of fun. Terrell Myers is in the game, and he's now having a conversation with Nemanja Petrovic on the way down the court as to who's supposed to be guarding Granger. And I think it's Terrell Myers. He didn't block him out. That's Granger's second offensive rebound basket this half. He's got 14 points for Granger. Three-pointer miss. Curly had it. <laughs> uh, Petrovic grabbed a hole of Curly's jersey as he tried to go after the basketball. And now he's limping. It has been a very physical basketball game. Another long shot attempt by St. Joe. <laughs> you can see. Petrovic, that's called not playing with your feet and playing with your hands. Petrovic got behind and just grabbed him. And Petrovic has hurt a bit. He's coming out of the basketball game. Well, Curly's a strong guy. He grabbed onto that shirt and Curly took him for a ride. Not one of those rippables. Let's check in with Mike Mayog, Mike. Yeah, on that last timeout, what happened was initially Phil Martelli was livid. He thought he was going to get a charge timeout. But what happened was because the officials stopped the play for an injury and then they substituted, there's no official timeout charge. Secondarily, Rizul is okay. Jam finger back in. Now St. Joseph put a little heat on Boston College. First time they've pressed. Ten. Ten and they do battle. Boston College with the great backcourt that they have and their ability to pass the ball after the screen and roll. They are an awfully tough team if they can play you from in front. And they're in front by 11 right now. Then on the shot clock, Woodward did a very strong game. Seven points, Ryan. Oh, he missed the stop! off the iron! But it takes it right back. Woodward. That Myers up in the air. Abrams. And he gets fouled. Pick one of two. They're going to give the foul to Terrell Myers. 
We've talked a lot about Boston College's ability to pass the ball. Curley sets the screen, that high screen, and he just rolls to the basket. And even though he misses the dunk, doesn't hang his head. Watch Curley get over here into the corner and run the ball down. St. Joe's was trying to let it go out of bounds, but Razul saw Abrams coming after it and decided he had to save the ball, saved it right into the hands of Curley. Abrams will go to the foul line. Ten points, five rebounds for Abrams, and uh, four for five for six from the free throw line for him. 49 to 37, Eagles on top. Frustration for Curley on the missed dunk, but he just really stayed with it, and Curley's had a fine effort for Boston College today. And uh, Abrams will get both ends of that 72% free throw shooter, and BC continues. And Boston College has two of their inside guys. And double figures, in fact, counting Granger, their starting front court, all three of them in double figures. There's some outside, and he got it for three. Darrell Myers, now keep point man. Keep in mind the kind of firepower that St. Joe's has from out there. Myers is one of those who can do that. See the defense now, Myers putting the heat on Woodward. He gets double team. Oh, nice job by Myers, hanging with him. Now Myers has to go find Granger as Damani does a nice job with the switch. St. Joe's brought that team way outside here to pick people up. Austin College once, twice, Granger couldn't get it. Good rebounding action underneath by Razul. They lost it, Granger picked it up. Boy, Scooby Pen was quick hand. Woodward and an offensive on Woodward. that Damani has drawn in the game now, both against Woodward, actually. Woodward just got that arm out there a little bit, his second charge, his second foul. Jim O'Brien not happy with the call, but Damani seeing that arm come out, not much contact, but he flopped right on his back. It's a 9-5, five, five, five off the high board on that. <laughs> Myers for three. BC still controlling the rebounds here as St. Joe's getting only one chance. And Phil Martelli telling his team to pass the ball. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those three-point shots, but you've got to get the ball inside and then take it back outside. You must get the defense to move or you'll never get an offensive rebound. Boston College out-rebounding St. Joe's 36 to 23. Waiting just one chance at that end of the floor. Abrams double-teamed all day. This time it works. Bay took it away. Bay. They've got the break going. Oh, almost a travel. Haskins and a whistle underneath. Abrams involved in the action with Razul. A good one here. Boston College on top. The first of two here in the West today. Upcoming games. Iowa and Kentucky next in the West. Xavier UCLA approximately seven. The Midwest game right here on CBS. Jerry, I'll tell you what. You can tell in here. Somebody has taken the intensity meter and turned it way, way up. These teams really getting after one another. A real rivalry for these two teams. There you see Dean Smith in our tournament summary with the record. Number one, Kansas continuing. Pac-10, 5-1 in the tourney so far. And Haskins with a nice touch puts it home. He's got his first two points of the game. And the press is on by St. Joe's. An eight-point lead for Boston College. 12 minutes to go in the second half. Bedard in the game for Woodward who went out. And this is really going to be a battle as we go down through these last 12 minutes. Boston College with some great guards in the backcourt who can really handle the ball. Magloss. Abrams found Magloss underneath. Magloss has three in the game. Won't find many big guys who can pass the ball the way Daniel Abrams can pass the ball. He's now got four assists, able to feel when the defense is coming to him and find the open man. Not only led the Eagles in scoring, but also an assist with just under eight a game. And there's a shot by Penn, who reached in and got a piece of Domani. Well, Daniel Abrams is a guy who works without the basketball, uses his body to create some space and then catches the ball. And watch Bedard. What a great job by Bedard to step through the double team and Abrams knows where the opening is and gets it to Magloss.
guess that answers that question. Reaching your financial goals can be a complex balancing act. At the Principal Financial Group, you will find the strength of our investment performance is your 401k retirement advantage. You will find our flexibility will meet your insurance needs. And you will find the balance of choice and quality you need in health coverage. For over 100 years, the Principal has made the complex simple. That's how we give you an edge. The Principal. RCA Home Theater with SRS Sound is 50% brighter with a sharper, clearer picture. Better picture, better sound. Better get out of the way. From now until April 20th, save as much as $100 by mail on select RCA products. See you tomorrow. With a powerful Vortec engine in a Chevy truck, you can go 100,000 miles before the first scheduled tune-up. Great news, especially when you live 100,000 miles from nowhere. She's found Mr. Right, but he's behind bars. Where does this gentleman live? In a house. Is it a big house? It's more like the big house. All new temporarily or CBS Wednesday. That is Coach Tom Davis of the Iowa Hawkeyes, seated eighth in the West. They'll go up against the number one seed in the West, Kentucky. Iowa players standing in the runway, watching, and the Kentucky players are just coming by them as well. And a good basketball game to watch. Boston College, seated number five. St. Joe's number four, but it's the Eagles right now who have the ten-point lead. Domani dishes back out for three, and that's a big three by Bay. Garrett, even that little bit of penetration by Damani drives the defense back and gives Bay the opening from three-point range. It's going to be very, very important for Boston College to handle the basketball. They've done a good job of it today. And Badar that time lost control of it. Here comes Davis with Abrams, and Abrams just makes sure there's no way he's going to score. Boston College very upset that there wasn't a foul called right here. Davis with real good pressure tries to come from behind and Bedard stumbles with the ball and then he's not able to recover it and so the St. Joe defense creates a turnover and that leads to a transition situation which Davis will now be looking to cash in from the free throw line. Abrams has his second personal foul. Granger has 14 points for Boston College. Abrams has got 12, 10 for Curley. The other end, Davis with 16, and still 16. Spoony Penn and Dwayne Woodward combined for 25 points in Thursday's game for Boston College. They only have 10 today, but Boston College, as you mentioned, getting it done along the front line. And Davis gets one out of two. He's a 70% free throw shooter who went four for four in the first round. St. Joe's keeping the pressure on here, beaten easily to Granger. Granger just dropped it off and Magloss was there. He saw Magloss. That's a good, aggressive play by Boston College to attack that pressure. 54-46, 10.35 to go. Second half. First of two to be played here in the West today. And the Eagles trying to pull somewhat of an upset, being the lower seed. Davis. Nice pass underneath. Good block by Abrams. Abrams on Razul. Boston College doing a real good job defensively switching on the inside. Playing basically a matchup zone with some man-to-man -man principles involved in it. They're just doing an outstanding job. That time, however, they turn it over. Good play by Bay reaching in to knock it away. We mentioned Boston College, a great passing team. That time, not a pass, but Damani actually got back and blocked the shot. And now down on, down on the other end, Daniel Abrams gets the blocked shot. So Boston College getting it done both on the offensive end and the defensive end. They've been dominant on the interior. St. Joe's back on the offense. Lonnie back outside the bay. 
And what St. Joe's needs to do is to get some penetration either with the pass or with the dribble. The three, Bay, yes. Okay, just as I said, they need to get the ball inside. Good job, Coach. <laughs> Bay's got 11 and three from three-point range. Bay, three for nine now from three-point distance. Ten, almost lost it. And a tripping foul called there on Robert Haskins. And that is going to be foul number four on Haskins. Boston College at St. Joe's, the first of the two games we'll have here in the Western Region today. Salt Lake City is where we are. D.C. with a 54-49 lead. They had trailed by as many as nine in the game. Have battled back to get the lead. As many as 13 on top for Boston College. A big swing for the Eagles. Boston College has done an outstanding job defensively forcing St. Joe to the perimeter. And on the offensive end, they've been able to get the ball inside and score consistently. Here comes Abrams again. Woodward back in the game. He's got the two. They've really got the inside-outside game working. That's what we're talking about. And that's what St. Joe's is not getting. St. Joe's is not getting that ball inside, kicking it back outside for the open shots. Domani. Woodward's got nine in the game for Boston College. Simmons. And he puts it home for three. But keep in mind, with the offensive firepower of the St. Joe's Hawks, they may be able to win this game shooting exclusively from three-point range. 11 for 32 for St. Joe's from the three distance. 56, 52. St. Joe's has cut the Eagles' lead back to four. Davis was guarding him. Abrams comes out. Abrams. Oh, what a pass. Only time is off. And off Thomas. Here, we're talking about the inside-outside game, and Daniel Abrams does that as well as anybody in the country. Here is Abrams right here. Now, watch as Abrams comes and gets the ball. He's going to receive the pass inside, and he's going to turn and find the offensive player on the other side of the court, Woodward, who just drills it in the basket. St. Joe's with a chance to cut this lead to two or one. Domani dishes off underneath and fouled on the action is Razul. You heard Phil Martelli say coming out of the locker room at halftime that St. Joe's is not an inside power team, but they need to get the ball inside. And Damani that time got it inside. You don't always have to stand out on top and try to throw it into the center. Damani taking the ball, driving hard to the basket, draws the defense, and Razul therefore gets the opportunity from the free throw. Line. Thomas picked up the personal foul. 54% free throw shooter, but he's got that one. He had four points in the opening round of the game. He's got five in this one. Free throw wise, you see the advantage Boston College has had in the attempts and those made. Razul, one out of two. Abrams pulls down the rebound. Seven rebounds for Abrams in the game. 7.50 remaining. Three point lead for the Eagles. Ten stolen by Bay. Bay is so quick and so strong. Davis for two. Tipped up. No good. Razul tipped it but right over the iron. DC getting instructions from Joe O'Brien on the bench now as Penn looks over and slows it down. Now BC doesn't want to get too conservative on the offensive end. They want to continue to attack and that's what we're going to do. Strike play. The big, guys, the big guys for BC do a great job when they see penetration of stepping to open areas. Devin Thomas just followed the ball. And Domani throws that one away. He tried to hit Simmons in the corner, but it went beyond him. We're down to 7.07 to go in the second half. Boston College on top with this one by Thomas. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Everybody on the set, please. Let's go. We better get going. So let's go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Do you have to go? I have to go, Paul. I know what I'm doing. Hey, did you see that? What is it? We like it. We like it. I'm so impressed. I guess we better get going. Okay, let's go. Don't look back, baby. Don't ever look back. Okay, let's go. Are you ready for a new minivan? The all-new Chevy Venture is here. Let's go. It happened one day. Just after sunrise in Hunan, Shen Cheng became the first in his village to call America. 
Lloyd moved from Lone Pine to the Global Village. And a man named Riley scouted six NBA teams at one time. Later, a banker sent half a billion dollars and hope to workers halfway around the world. And a reporter sent word that the citizens of Claremont were all safe and sound. Nothing is impossible. Well, we've got to believe that too. As Christopher Reeve inspired a room full of people a thousand miles away. 220 million times a day, people share information, ideas, and dreams on the most powerful network on Earth. And from a world away, a tiny voice reached Shen Cheng. The Eagles up by five up at Salt Lake City in the altitude there, 58-53. Other great games going on right now. In Auburn Hills, Michigan, Iowa State leading Cincinnati 54-49. Cincy in the white jerseys. Clark Kellogg, Iowa State, those upper class and stepping up. They really are. They're doing a nice job. Kenny Pratt, Dedrick Willoughby, Kelvin Cato went to the bench with his fourth foul about three minutes ago. Cincinnati and Iowa State spread it out a little bit. They're going to rely on Dedrick Willoughby and the guy you see shooting free throws now, Kenny Pratt, to carry him home. Shooting 70% this half, 56% for the game. Over in Memphis, College of Charleston is leading Arizona 47-39. to Shooting 55% on the game because they're getting high-quality shots, doing a nice defensive job as well, Pat. The Cougars have just gone on a 13, rather 14-4 run. They're at the line. Anthony Johnson, TAC Player of the Year this year. Outstanding senior point guard. And even with that, they're hitting 55% from the line. So we'll keep you posted on these games. Great game this afternoon. Let's go back up to Salt Lake City, where Boston College still has a five-point lead. with 6.08 in the game. Let's go back to Gary Thorne. Thomas came down with a rebound and was... Foul. Rashid Bay charged with a foul. Bay picked up the foul. And the interesting thing is, St. Joe's has just gotten two defensive stops. They've run the ball down the court and missed three pointers early in the shot clock. Bay pulls up off the transition, hits the back of the rim, and then I think a little frustration on the part of Bay. He goes and just swats at the ball. And Bevan Thomas, a big, strong guy. Once he gets it, it's going to be hard to knock it away. St. Joe's, as we've said, looking to win this game free point land. They're 11 for 34. The Eagles in their opening round win from the free throw line, 22 for 29. In the opening round, they're doing the same thing here in this game. They're taking advantage of free throw opportunities. They are 13 for 18. And Thomas will try and add to that total. Does not get it. Now, this is the third consecutive defensive stop, if you will. And St. Joe's is running out of time, although there's plenty of time left. You do not want to have so many unproductive trips late in the game. Myers in the ball game, double teamed in the corner, and uh, had to take a timeout. And Phil Martelli shaking his head over there. He just, he does not understand why Myers put his back to the court in the corner, allowed himself to be double teamed. No movement at all for St. Joe's. Against that zone, they have got to pass the ball and they've got to move so they can create open opportunities. And even if they miss the three-point shots, if they've been moving, they'll be harder to block out. They'll have a better shot at the offensive rebound. There's the time remaining in the second half. One of these teams will move on to Sweet 16. Boston College on top by five. Eagles being led in this game. Uh, by Granger has got the 14. Abrams has got 12, 10 for Curley. They've spread it out. Woodward 9, Thomas 5, and Maglos 5. Davis still with 17, but as we said, most of those came, 14 of them in the first five and a half minutes of the first half. There's Davis right there. Damani on a couple of trips down the court has taken the ball and driven it into the zone. And that has been an effective strategy. Big three point by Myers. 
Darrell Myers. Myers hasn't really scored very effectively in this tournament, during this regional so far, but that was a big basket for the sixth man, Terrell Myers. He has nine in the game and three three-pointers for Myers. Woodward, a two-point differential. Eagles with the basketball in the lead. Here comes that high screen and roll. Aguas, pin for three. Good block out by Damani, and he draws the foul. Damani got fouled by Magloss reaching in from behind. Stops the clock at 5-11 left. And Jim O'Brien was trying to get Danye Abrams a breather, but he can't afford to have Abrams over there very long. As soon as that whistle blew, Abrams was up and back in the game. There he comes. Granger for Boston College back in as well. Thomas is out of there. And the increased defensive pressure by St. Joe's has slowed down the Boston College offense and allowed the Hawks to climb back into this game. Sixth team foul committed by Boston College. One and one both ways. But they don't even have anybody anywhere close. Look, there's five guys almost around the perimeter. Lonnie trying to set up Davis for three. Nice push back. Penn gets it underneath. The stop and the foul. Good ball movement by St. Joe's creates the opportunity. Ball movement creates the opportunity, but Damani penetrates into the lane, and that penetration into the lane created that whole thing for Boston, for St. Joe's, and Damani was able to get the offensive rebound and a great pass inside by Ben. Granger gets his third personal foul. Huge free throws the rest of the way. Deval Simmons, a 65% free throw shooter, went four for five in the first game from the line. First free throw attempts he's had in this game. One for two. And it's a one-point lead for Boston College. The Eagles, the Big East champions. St. Joe's, the Atlantic 10 champions. Taking this one down to the wire. A little push off. Abrams. The Monty and the whistle as he tried to go in. And Damani can't believe it. Damani's been called. He put his hands on it, and you can't put your hands on a guy and leave him there, particularly when the guy's going to the basket. Phil Martelli's shaking his head. But you can expect that Boston College will be trying to get the ball into the hands of Danye Abrams. Six of seven from the free throw line. We mentioned five assists. That's been a pretty good place for Boston College to go. 16 points in the opening round for Abrams. Increases the lead to two for Boston College, and he has 13 points in this game. And what a magnificent college career for Danye Abrams. Three times, first team all Big East selection, 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds. Abrams, the first person at Boston College to reach that 2,000 point, 1,000 rebound. Line. And he got both of them. Boston College by three, St. Joe's. And there's really nothing flashy about Daniel Abrams' game. He just goes out and grinds at you the entire game. Myers. Myers. Would have counted, but he didn't get it to go. He did get fouled. Boston College wanted the foul to go the other way. Granger's got his fourth personal foul. Boston College in their matchup zone defense for the most part today has been able to cut off the penetration by the St. Joe guards. But the last couple of possessions, St. Joe's with the dribble able to create some opportunities on the inside. Oh, the pressure right here. First time at the line for Myers. Gets the first one. Myers went five for six from the free throw lane in the first game. A good free throw shooter at 81%. Gets them both, and again, St. Joe's pulls to within one. And Bay is going to try very hard to keep the ball out of the hands of Scooty Penn. Look at Curley bringing it up. That's not what D.C. wants to see a lot of. But he got it into forecourt. And Penn actually went and took the ball out of Curley's hand. My job. Give me the ball. <laughs> Woodward. Granger. Abrams. Penn. Curley for Boston College. Davis guarding Woodward. Curley put it on the floor and travels. A great finish 
with only 3.42 left. by dialing 1-800-COLLECT, Angel. Let me show you how it's done. It's so easy. Now let me show you how it's done. Any Joe will tell you, 1-800-COLLECT is the easy way to save up to 44%. Oh, no. BC the advantage, see the three-pointers, turnovers have piled up here. What a finish we've got for you. Well, we talked about how St. Joe's doesn't shoot the ball very well, but they've been able to get back in this game on the strength of their defense. They've forced 14 turnovers, they've begun to convert the turnovers, and so I think we're really headed down to an exciting finish. And the clock becomes a factor now with only 3.38 left to go. St. Joe's has the basketball. Each team has had a substantial lead in this game. Boston College, 13. St. Joe's, by as many as nine. Both have had to come back at different times and have done it. And here's that zone defense again by Boston College. St. Joe's has had success when they've punched it inside. And they continue to have success from beyond the three-point line. Wow! Darrell Myers gets the three, and St. Joe's is back on top by two. Their first lead since it was 30-29 late in the first half. And they get it with three minutes left to go in the basketball game. The Eagles, Woodward, Granger, the three. In and out. Rebounding action. Pushing foul on Abrams underneath as he pushed Damani. Abrams has three. Judy Martelli, the wife of Coach Phil Martelli of St. Joe's. <laughs> you can see her exhaling a little bit there. St. Joe's has come back in the ball game on the strength of their three-point offense. And that time they didn't do anything to try to get the ball inside the zone. They just passed the ball around the, uh, you know, the outside of the zone. They've attempted 37 three-point shots. They've made 13. Four for Davis, four for Myers from three-point range. Myers has 14 points. Domani goes to the line. Does not get it, Abrams, the rebound. And Boston College has to get it back on offense a little bit. St. Joe's, by applying tremendous pressure against the basketball, has disrupted the Boston College offense. And with only two minutes and 41 seconds left in the game, Jim O'Brien wants a 20-second timeout to talk about it. Take a look at our brackets here in the West. The first of two games to be played here in Salt Lake City with Kentucky, Iowa, the second. D.C. and St. Joe's with those wins in the opening round two days ago. In Tucson tomorrow, the remainder of the Western bracket 
undefeated seeded teams the Stanford Wake Forest and UNC Charlotte and Utah. The Utes have moved on. And the folks around here very, very anxious about the Utes of Utah. Here saying, well, you know, gee, if we are going to advance to the Final Four, it looks like we'll probably have to beat either Wake Forest or Stanford if they can get by the UNC Charlotte. And then if they do that, then they're looking at maybe Kentucky. And so they're not happy with their draw, but they're happy to be in the tournament. Abrams underneath, trying to force it up, partially blocked by Simmons. Good defensive play, and he came away with a basketball. Abrams getting real tough, and O'Brien and Abrams both complaining there was no foul called there. Four block shots now for Simmons. And that's what Jim O'Brien wanted to do in the 22nd timeout. Get it down inside to Abrams, and he figured he'd get either two points or a foul. But a good defensive play by St. Joe's, and it's the St. Joe's defense that has gotten them back to the lead. Simmons got it done. Now Bay on the offense. Bay, Davis, trying to work his way underneath on Woodward. Forces it up and gets it. One of the things that had Boston College concerned was the size and strength of Davis. Domani intercepts their leading defender, a huge turnover. They never saw him. Damani just hung back, waited until the ball was in the air, and had the speed to close on it. And now St. Joe's can take their time. A basket here would really make it difficult for Boston College. 133 remaining in the game. They will run it down. 13 on the shot clock. Damani, the Atlantic 10 Defensive Player of the Year, coming up with an enormous steal here. That's for three. And Maglos with a rebound. The Eagles with a basketball. Stoney 10. Four-point lead, St. Joe. Boy, Abrams looking to go to the basket, almost lost the ball. What defensive pressure. Simmons working on him along the street with Bay, knocked away by Bay and Simmons. Abrams complaining again that there was no foul. One minute exactly on the clock. Gary, we've talked about St. Joe's defense. Simmons does a great job holding his ground, just puts his arm up and gets the hand, gets his hand on the ball, doesn't drop the arm, and therefore does not get the foul. And Damani just sees that long pass coming and steps in front of it. And you can see the St. Joe bench. They're very excited, but they want him to slow it down. Great play by Damani. Each team has two full timeouts remaining. There are no 20-second timeouts left for either team. One minute left. St. Joe's has battled back here in the second half to retake the lead with three minutes left to go. There's now one minute left, and St. Joe's up by four. Strange off the front. Huge rebound underneath, and another foul in the rebounding action. Razul for St. Joe's underneath will go to the foul line at the other end. Boston College coming out of the 22nd timeout, an open three-point shot that Damani gets in and gets a hand up, but Razul with a nice job to get up for that rebound, and where Boston College dominated the back boards early, St. Joe's has asserted their presence on the defensive boards in particular. Abrams' his fourth personal foul. Razul. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Bill Martelli, the coach, and his wife in nail-biting time. Azul, not a particularly good free-throw shooter during the regular season at 53%, but these two he puts home. 66 to 60. Three for four today for the free-throw line for Azul. And gets the three. And Boston College gets the timeout. 6.1 left on the clock as Penn gets the first BC field goal in six and a half minutes for Jim O'Brien's team. It is not over yet. I know a place. What is America? Uh, ain't nobody crying. It's a can-do country. We invented the knuckleball, the astronaut, and the Dr. J. Dunk. And when we put our minds to it, we can even make a Malibu. A car so carefully crafted, the only bugs you're going to see are the ones on your windshield. The car you knew America could build. The brand new Chevy Malibu. I'll take you there. 
Abner, get these tax documents to our clients fast, but watch our costs. FedEx can deliver it in two days for about eight dollars. Ah! UPS can deliver it in two days for about seven dollars. Ah! Priority Mail can deliver it in two to three days for three dollars. <laughs> Smart move, Budner. Seven, eight, seven, three. What's your priority? Switch to priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Honey, where are my blue socks? The Monopoly game at McDonald's. You could win a million dollars. Just buy larger, super-sized fries, and you could win this prize. It's our best Monopoly game ever. You're in the draw with the money. Duh. What do you want with your prize? Can MasterCard help stop a thief? The answer lies in the tamper-resistant panel that MasterCard pioneered. It makes a stolen credit card practically useless. And your MasterCard even more secure. MasterCard. It's smart money. Where are we? You know, men, I think we're lost. Don't worry, Mr. Henry. Oh. Across America, more people use Cellular One than any other cellular service. That's a good scout. Torn by secrets. Bound by blood. You have to show a little respect. Mario Puzo's The Last Dawn, CBS Sunday, May 11th. After Scooney Penn's three-point basket, Boston College now trails by three. And how does Penn get open? Well, watch Danye Abrams and Rashid Bey. <laughs> Abrams, that's what you call a big-time screen. Maybe a block right there, and that gets Scooney Penn open. Boston College, the pressure. St. Joe's the basketball with 45 seconds left. And the foul immediately by uh, Thomas. In the backcourt, stops it with 45.1 left. And knowing that Boston College has no option at this point in the game except to try to get the steal, and if they don't get the steal to get the quick foul, Phil Martelli with a substitution takes Razul out of the game. The guys in the game now for Phil Martelli, all pretty good free throw shooters. Davis, three of four on the line today. And on the year, he is a 71% free throw shooter. Davis on the line. Trying to add to the totals that have been put up by this backcourt. He misses that one. 44 of St. Joe's 66 points have come from the backcourt of Davis, Myers, and Bay. There you see the team fouls, double bonus situation, St. Joe's. Timeouts remaining. The arrow right now for Boston College. And here's Razul back in the game for defensive purposes as Myers goes out. One of these teams to move on to the third round. It'll be decided in the final minute of this game. Davis makes that one. And St. Joe's, 67. Boston College, 63. That's the time remaining in the game. Penn. Simmons turned him away. Ranger. Penn. Gets around. One. Can't get around Simmons. Woodward driving. The layup. No good. Tipped up and in. Good play underneath Magloss. Magloss gets seven points. Got to get the foul. Penn moves up, but immediately fouls. Bay. And maybe the best move in that whole area for St. Joe's was Harold Razul getting all the way down the court so they couldn't foul him. Nice defensive job by St. Joe's to make Boston College run some time off the clock. Boston College has been dominant on the inside today. Magloss gets the tip. It's been the backcourt of St. Joe's. All right, let's take a look at the double box now. Two games coming to a conclusion here. One-point game and a two-point game. Let's listen in on Gus Johnson. 11 seconds left. Iowa State leading. So Iowa State is taking his time out to try to figure out what the next play will be. Good ball there. A timeout in the Midwest at Auburn Hills with Iowa State leading Cincinnati, 67-66. 11 seconds left. We'll get back to that. Let's go back to Salt Lake City where it's a four-point game. St. Joe's up. Time down to 26 seconds. The fellow came in the other day, knew exactly what he wanted, but I didn't have it. So I told him I'd make a few calls. Yeah, I'll hold. Don't have any? No luck, huh? You've got one? I'll be there first thing in the morning. Hey, Bob, want to go for a drive? It took some time, but we found what he wanted. Although getting it took even more time, because we had to bring it back from a dealership a couple of states away. He was pleased we went so out of our way for a used car. I told him we did the same thing we would have done for a new car. Or Saturn, for that matter. 
and you've got this huge customer. They're so huge, sometimes they don't even know when they've received a shipment. Whose problem is this? Yours. That's why you ship UPS, because only UPS captures signatures electronically. Then you can use UPS online tracking software to see your customer's actual signature. So when they say, we never got it, you can say not only did you get it, but uh, you don't dot your eyes. UPS online. Are you connected yet? Hey, what's that? Incredible. What? Impossible. What? What? RCA digital satellite dishes. What? Billions of them. Where are they coming from? Uh, that way. Radio Shack? Radio Shack is America's number one retailer of RCA digital satellite TV. Surprised? Don't be. Who knows more about satellite TV than the people at Radio Shack? Hey, what's that? I don't know, but I'm not putting one on my roof. Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. Pizza Hut employee memo number 44. For Hoops fans, March brings one number to mind. Four! As in... It's in the final four. Right, so we're going to give them a deal that's easy to remember. Back to work, everybody! Give them a large pizza, a Pepsi, buffalo wings, and breadsticks. That's four things. Four things? For four people. For four dollars each? Yep, that's four things. For four dollars each? For four people. You guys are quicker than a point guard. Of course, once fans hear about this deal, you're not going to have time to work on that hook shot. Oh. Let's quickly go to Auburn Hills now. It's a one-point game, 11 seconds to go. Iowa State leading by one. Let's go down to Gus Johnson. Timeouts remaining. Each team with one full timeout. The possession arrow in the favor of the Bearcats. Think they're going to try to get the ball if they can. Here's Flint. Pump fake. Got it off. Short. Scramble for the ball. with a huge rebound, but he's still got to make the shot. He's got to make foul shots now. Because even if he makes both, should he make the first one? Let's go back to Salt Lake and listen now. 20 seconds left. St. Joe's up by four. Over Boston College. Bill Martelli in disbelief. Jim O'Brien of Boston College still hoping. Martelli, his team's committing the personal foul will stop the clock send Woodward to the line with 20 seconds left DC down by four one and one Woodward three for four from the free throw line today a 72 percent free throw shooter has nine points in the game a million times sit at the line and this and that gym for this moment 16 Iowa State goes to the round of 16 just beating Cincinnati 67 to 66. Let's send you back to Salt Lake City for the finish there. 20 seconds left on that part. 20 seconds left in the game. St. Joe's leading Boston College 69 66. Woodward at the line for BC makes both of them. And it is a two point game with 20 seconds left. And Jim O'Brien gets a substitution into the game, so that stops the clock and allows his team the opportunity to set its defense. St. Joe's in white immediately getting it in, and the foul immediately as Davis got wrapped up. And Jim O'Brien sends his offensive troops into the game. Now he had his defensive guys in, or his guys in to give a foul, and so now he gets Abrams back in the game. Foster came in to commit the personal foul. You get regimental changes uh, here in this situation. Davis for St. Joe's will go to the line at the other end. Boston College and St. Joe's have battled. Each have had leads. BC has led by as many as 13. St. Joe's by as many as nine. Both have made comebacks. Here we are in the final minute. Yeah, David. And that makes you feel different. Let's start with you. Tell me your name and why you're here. My name is Michael, and I'm fast. Uh, my name is Randy, and I'm fast. My name is Kenny, but I'm not that fast. Kenny, you stole 75 bases last year. You've got Zoom air in your shoes. Try it again, okay? My name is Kenny, and I'm fast, but not as fast as him. 
Kenny, we can't like you until you like you. We're all on your side. Well, there was one year where I, I almost lost the entire backyard to crabgrass, and I vowed that would never happen again. The following year, I did use turf builder plus halts. It not only got rid of the crabgrass, but it also greened up the lawn and thickened it. I used the cheaper brands, but I didn't have the color that I wanted, and I did have the weeds. Look how thick it is. Look at the color of it. There are no weeds. I take the credit instead of Scott's. I call it Louie Lawn. I'm very proud of the results that I get from Scott's. And there will be no crabgrass. I'm a soft-spoken kind of guy. There's nothing more important to me than a quiet chat with my son Shaquille. I just marched to the phone and dialed 1-800-COLLECT. The money I saved him, he can use to buy some new backboards. Take it to the hole, Shaquille. And they wonder where he gets it from. 1-800-COLLECT. Save the people you call up to 44%. What'd you get? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets? Wendy's five-piece crispy chicken nuggets are such a great deal at 99 cents. Oh, what? Everybody's eating them. At 99 cents, you might want to order two. Get five Wendy's chicken nuggets, now just 99 cents every day. These are the shoes that make athletes out of mere mortals. The shoes that make men fly. And these are the insoles that can wear out. Replace your old insoles with Dr. Scholl's sport insoles for better shock absorption. Make your shoes feel like new. While you're rocking on the road to the Final Four, jump on the Information Expressway. CBS Sports is online with the breaking news and the latest scores at cbs.sportsline.com. Only 14.6 seconds left in this game. Boston College trailing by two. They have the basketball. They have no timeout. St. Joe's has won. The arrow goes to BC. Boston College in the maroon. St. Joe's in white. 69-67 St. Joe's. Both teams have had substantial leads in this game. It comes down to the final minute. BC the ball. Cooney 10. Abrams the man they look for underneath right there. Sets the pitch. 10. Time remaining in the game, a whistle, and a pushing foul on Simmons of St. Joe, with 5.7 seconds left. You just saw Arthur Davis make three of four free throws in the last 29 seconds for St. Joe, so Scooney Penn gets the screen from Daniel Abrams, and Duval Simmons, who had four blocked shots in the game, just not quick enough to stay with Scooney Penn. The good screen by Abrams creates an opening for Penn, but now Scooney Penn has to go to the free throw line to convert. And a double bonus situation. Simmons has fouled out of the game. Fouling out with nine points. And Phil Martelli has 30 seconds to get a substitute into the game, and he's gonna take as much time as he possibly can to make Penn stand there and wait. Penn is a 77% free throw shooter, but this would be his first free throw attempt of the game. Boston College seated number fifth, number five rather in the West, the Big East champion against St. Joe's, the number four seed, winners of the Atlantic 10. Here in the second round, 5.7 seconds remaining in regulation. And double bonus, single bonus, doesn't make any difference here. Scooney Penn's in a situation where he's got to make them both, and now Phil Martelli elects to call the last timeout to give him some more time to think about it. Neither team has a timeout remaining. What do you think of when you hear the name Penske? Um... Anything else? Uh... Right, but you missed something. Auto Center, the tire place, brake place, battery place, and oil change place, all in one place. Complete professional auto service from the name you can trust. Penske Auto Center, you've come to the right place. Now at over 800 Kmart locations nationwide. They say the 50s were the golden age of television. But today, we can actually use our TVs to surf the internet. So we can go places we've always dreamed of going. Find out about almost anything. Hear things we've never heard before. Amazing. Web TV from Philips Magnavox. The power of the internet now on your own television. In business, as in life, the problems that can't be ignored are the ones that get attention. 
But at Ernst & Young, we'd like to remind you that there's also a lot to be said for taking a close look at areas that seem to be functioning just fine. Ernst & Young, there isn't a business we can't improve. seconds left to go in the game. St. Joe's leading by two. Scooney Penn. When you were 10 years old, you were in the playground, you stood at the line. There was no time left on the clock, and you were going to take the free throws that would decide the game. Well, there's 5.7 left on the clock, but this could decide the game. Scooney Penn, 77% free throw shooter. First time at the line today. Now, no timeouts for St. Joe's, and so they talked about what they want to do if he makes both free throws. Still plenty of time for St. Joe's to get a shot. The tie. 69, 69. Bay almost lost it. ball right there and because he lost control of the ball he had to take that off balance shot and even with that it still almost went in the basket as Bay dribbles the ball up he just loses control of it right there and therefore he cannot get an on balance shot but Bay had the ball in scoring position but couldn't handle it Judy Martelli the wife of St. Joe's coach Bill Martelli St. Joe's bench. Waiting for the free throws and then after the free throw miss. Not able to get the shot, although Bay did a great job running the ball into the front court. He had position. We go to overtime in this first game in the Western region today. Boston College, the number five seed, and St. Joe's, the number four seed. A tremendous basketball game. Boston College had led by as many as 13 in the second half. St. Joe's had led by as many as nine in the first half of this game. Guy Davis with 20 points. St. Joe's, their leader. 14 for Myers, 13 for Bay. Boston College, Abrams has 14. 14 for Granger, 11 for Woodward, 10 for Curley. They've sprung it out. Simmons has fouled out for St. Joe's. He had nine points, and here we go, five minutes of overtime for one of these teams to move on to the third round. And Simmons was a very critical factor in St. Joe's defensive effort to get themselves back in the game and get the lead, and he is now fouled out. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle Abrams on the inside. Petrovic comes up for Bay, sets a pick. There's Davis, their leading offensive scorer. Underneath, got fouled from behind by Maglaw. Now remember, Davis, Arthur Davis, missed three out of four free throws in the last 30 seconds of the game that could have sealed the game for St. Joe's. So he's four of eight at the line today, and he'd really like to get a little redemption right here. Wonderful pressure to watch, and perhaps even to have it on you, because this is what you play for. St. Joe's ahead by one. Davis had 19 in the opening round in their victory against Pacific. And he goes one for two on that one. Davis 
with 21 points in the game. We're in overtime. Salt Lake City. Woodward. 11 for Woodward. There's Abrams. Granger. Great defense. Damani, great defense. And Haskins the board. Damani is their number one defensive player. Number one in the conference in the Atlantic 10 this year. That's Davis. And Joe's a little bit handing on the offensive end. Boston College stays in that matchup zone. Damani can shoot the three-pointer. Nice touch. Goes the lane. Dishes back. That was for three. No good by Bay. Took back to Bay. Bay for two. And St. Joe's on top. And a whistle. The ball in the backcourt. Officials want to discuss something here. Well, Tom Rucker signaled a two, and Mike Kitts just making sure that it was a two. The officials checking with one another. It was two. 72-69, St. Joe's on top. Basically, all that was was one official going to the other and saying, are you sure? He said yes. <laughs> Abrams over the top. The tip. No, that was Lutz was on the rim. Ball was on the rim when he tried to tip it in. Ball definitely sitting up there on the rim as Magloss touches it, and he's upset with the call, but it's the proper one. Danye Abrams now only 3 of 12 from the field. Their leading scorer for Boston College, St. Joe's, with 3 12 to go in the overtime. They have the basketball, and they have a three-point lead, a big possession right here. Shot St. Joe's back into it. Here's Davis. Put the move on. Granger couldn't get the hit. Myers the rebound. Lost it out of bounds. And they turn it over. It'll be Boston College ball. Good hustle by Myers. He just simply couldn't control it. And the substitution's coming off the bench. Razul will come back in. He had a bloodied nose in that third period. Well, and they desperately need him. With Simmons having fouled out of the game, they need Razul's presence inside. Each team will have a timeout if they want. Here in the OT, Penn got the lane and gets the two. Good, aggressive move to the basket by Scooney Penn. Boston College trying to regain its aggressiveness on offense, and Penn showed you how it's done right there. Penn has 10 in the game. Overtime. That's the time remaining in it. A one-point lead for St. Joe's. Again, Boston College just matching up on the defensive end. Bay. Davis. No good. Abrams gets the rebound. And Boston College a chance to go on top. Abrams almost pulled the trigger on a pass down court, but didn't. Ranger, the long shot goes over the backboard. Granger, like Arthur Davis, started out in the ballgame scoring very effectively, but he has been relatively quiet in the second half. Back in comes the Myers. St. Joe's for the basket. All right, we'll keep getting data on the overtime, of course. We want you to see the finish down in Memphis, where Arizona leads College of Charleston by four. Let's listen in. Back to Johnson. Johnson. the foul that's four on him now listen up to play with listen up tim if he makes these two it's fine college of charleston got a chance to put it into overtime there's 13.9 left simon at the line let's see that play again he's kind of leaning over ended up making it and they called it a three i guess he didn't touch the ground If he makes some misses here, but if he makes both, then you got to go for three. If he only makes one, he can go for the two. But there's plenty of time left. 13 seconds plus is a lifetime. 71 to 69, a two-point game. Simon, a 78% shooter from the line. Got wow, they go anyway. That goes to the lady, but you got it down court. Johnson, you got to keep moving, son. Two-point game, Johnson to the quarter. This is President. President in and out, rebounded. Whoa, the big dodge of Phyllis. Wow. 2.3 seconds left. Johnson is out with five fouls. President will be at 
the line. Dresden had to take the shot, but he hasn't been hot in the last two games. I would have kicked it to someone else. The sophomore from Charleston. Burke High School went for it. Got the back iron. He put it up good. He didn't choke or anything, but I just thought he hasn't been hot. Arizona bench, they knew what they're up against. Luke finally takes a drink of water there, and he says, thank God. What a finish here. 2.3 seconds remain. Two-point Arizona lead. Johnson is fouled out. I to tell you, College of Charleston, congratulations. You did a dynamite job. John Cress, you upgrade coaching by going to a small school and staying in there and not constantly running to the bank, to the bank, to the bank. Congratulations. I know it's going to be kind of sad tonight. You'll dream, well, you won't dream because you won't sleep. And Bibby calmly nails that one. Mark Himes in the lineup, 17 points for Bibby. And credit to that cool freshman, Mike Bibby, back to a four-point game with 2.3 left. They just Long won't pass foul. down to Harris makes the catch and throws up the ball. It is all over. Arizona, the number four. So it'll be a repeat of last year in the Sweet 16. Arizona will play Kansas next. Let's go back to Salt Lake City, where St. Joe's leads by four now. With Boston College there at the line. Let's listen in. Woodward at the line for Boston College misses. We are in overtime. St. Joe's leads it by four with 40.5 seconds left to go. A great basketball game where both teams have had leads. Each has battled back. Sent into overtime. St. Joe's has extended their lead to four the last time down court. And Woodward will get one out of two. He has 12 in the game. And immediately the foul committed by Bedard in backcourt on Richard Bay. Jim O'Brien put in overtime here in Salt Lake City you see the 39.8 remaining the first game in the Western region today Boston College the number five seed in the West against St. Joe's the number four seed the overtime with St. Joe's now on top and big foul shots here and the first is off by Rashad Bay <laughs> Rashid Bay, who just buried a huge three-point basket, misses the free throw, and St. Joe's missed some free throws down the stretch in regulation, and that's one of the reasons we're in overtime. Razul comes back in. Bay has 18 points, eight assists, has had no turnovers, four steals, and is two for three from the line. And add another. 39.8 seconds left to go. Abrams back in. Woodward, Boston College with the ball, but they are down by four. Woodward, an outside shooter along with that man right there, Penn. Woodward. Cut off. This to Abrams. Couldn't control. Great steal, Myers. Myers will be fouled. And with 24 seconds left to go, Boston College against the tough defense of St. Joe's turns it over. That time, Arthur Davis moved his feet, didn't reach in and try to knock the ball away, and that's really what generated the turnover. Big free throw by Rasheed Bay made it a two-possession game. Now Meyer can put it into a situation where Boston College will have to make two threes to tie, but he missed it. Myers two for three from the line today. Boston College has had 18 turnovers. St. Joe's only six. St. Joe's 18 for 28 from the free throw line. Terrell Myers to St. Joe's knocks it home. 77, 72 St. Joe's on top. Knocked away and out of bounds. Big effort over here by Razul. Boston College will play it in backcourt. Both coaches up and shouting out instructions. 23.4 left in the overtime. Woodward gets it into Abrams. DC's going to hustle it up here. Great job. Great defensive job by St. Joe. And gets it in the corner. Magloss in the lane. He got fouled by Myers. Terrell Myers. 14.1 seconds left in overtime. It's not over yet. That is not really a play that Phil Martelli wanted Terrell Myers to make. Magloss taking the ball to the basket. 
Myers is now fouled out of the game, but you don't want Boston College to be able to cut into that lead with the clock stop. One of the great six men in the country right there, Terrell Myers, 15 points. Not only one start in the last two years, but has come off the bench to be one of their leading scorers and a great three-point man, but he's out of here. 15 points today and four for 10 from three-point range. And once again, Phil Martella has 30 seconds to put a substitute into the game, and as he did at the end of regulation, he's going to make Boston College wait the full amount of time before he makes the substitution. St. Joseph leading at 77, 72. First game in the West is this one. The second one will feature the number one seed in the West, Kentucky, taking on Iowa. And these two winners here will be moving on to the third round. Tremendous pressure in this game. The end of the regulation and here in overtime with these free throws. Mag lost one for two from the line. 14.1 seconds left. They'll get another. That one no good. Tapped away to the near side. Davis saves it in. No, he was out of bounds. 77-72. The way for Phil Martelli, the coach. That's Judy, St. Joe's coach right there. Trying to get his team moved on. And a timeout will be taken. The overtime, 11.7 seconds left in it. I do not drive to work. I do not drive to get from point A to point B. I do not drive to run away from the world. DocuColor 40 prints or copies 40 color pages in just 60 seconds. It's an idea a lot of people have been waiting for. The Document Company, Xerox. At Carnival of Venice, beneath every mask is an unexpected surprise. In that tradition, the Olive Garden created new seven cheese chicken carnival, just $8.95. A blending of seven luscious cheeses, seasoned with garlic and herbs, stuffed between two grilled chicken breasts, with zesty fettuccine alla marinara, plus all the salad and fresh breadsticks you'd like, all just $8.95. New seven cheese chicken carnival, especially for Carnival. At the Olive Garden, come, enjoy, eat Italian. I want boom, dot, boom, doom. Why do you want to look at my Discover card statement? It's mine. I live in New York City. Of course, I love the theater. Bring in the noise. You know, it's my favorite show. I go there as often as I can, trying to steal another step. And my, my kids want me to be more risky. Come to Gaston stuff is, you know, it's risky. I want a cash back bonus. How many credit cards make a statement like that? It pays to Discover. Use it where you see the nervous sign. Hmm? Western region, game one, St. Joe's leading it in overtime. The effort you make at this point of the season. And these guys don't think this game is too important. Davis right there steps on the line, touches the ball, and you can see his reaction. Austin College has the basketball with the clock running down. That's Granger for three. Point lead for St. Joe's, and the foul committed on the far side on the pass in will send Bay to the line again. And another Eagle slowly getting up at the other end. I think more out of frustration than injury. Ken's all right. Well, he went diving after that ball, and I think he may have caught an elbow. And that's five fouls on Scooney Penn. Scooney Penn, the MVP of the Big East tournament, the 95 rookie of the year. 
And now points, five rebounds, four assists for him, and he's out of there. And now Jim O'Brien with the 30 seconds to substitute a player. And so we're going to wait a while. Granger, who had missed eight of his last nine shots, comes wheeling off the screen by Woodward. It's like he does that every day. Boston College electing not to call the timeout. Scooby Penn going for the quick foul. And now once again, we have a situation for St. Joe's where if they can make two free throws, they can pretty much seal the game. They had that situation in overtime and were not able to do it. And Boston College came back in the game, but it's looking fairly bleak for the Eagles right now. Because Scooby Penn is a guy that you would almost figure you have to have in the game if you're going to come back and win one like this. Bedard will come in, Andy Bedard for Boston College in place of Tim. They will go to the line. He's three for four at the line today. 78% free throw coming in. And he makes it. He now has 20 points. Bay has 20 in the game. Davis with 21, leading St. Joe. Flex shooting. 79, 75, overtime. St. Joe's up by four. Boston College with the ball. Woodward takes it to the lane. The running right hander. Woodward gets it. Hands the timeout taken. 2.5 left. St. Joe's by two. when you hear the name Penske. Um. Anything else? Uh. Right, but you missed something. Penske Auto Center. The tire place. Brake place. Battery place. And oil change place. All in one place. Complete professional auto service from the name you can trust. Penske Auto Center. You've come to the right place. Now at over 800 Kmart locations nationwide. Joe Gaddy, I want you to know where we are in this deal. Well, Leo, Joe Gaddy. Across America, more people use Cellular One than any other cellular service. Yep. Okay, Dad, you can use the phone now. Oh, okay. Thanks, honey. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? <laughs> get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. Didn't Nats Deli is naming a sandwich after me. This is one hero that's hard to swallow. I think he's dead. Are you sure? Because I've been fooled by men before. Ink, CBS, Big Company, but Boston College friend Woodward now has 14 points in the game. And we have seen some great clutch plays on both sides. Dwayne Woodward just getting the ball quickly down the court. Great shot right there, looking for the possible foul. But what he had to do was get it down and score quickly. He did it in less than five seconds. 2.5 seconds left to go. The immediate foul on the pass in on the far side as Bay was fouled. We'll walk the other way. Foul committed by Woodward. Down to two seconds left in overtime. With St. Joe's leading by two. Great job by Boston College to stretch out the game in these last few seconds, giving themselves a chance. But Bay, Bay has the opportunity, obviously, to put it away with only two seconds left. The only chance that Boston College has is if he misses one of these free throws. He's five of six today. And his 22nd point to go along with eight assists and not one turnover for the man who runs the offense 
for the St. Joe's Hawks. Now if he makes this, all the kids from St. Joe's has St. Joseph has to do is get out of the way. And he does. 77. Boston College with the ball, but only two seconds on the clock. They are down by four. It starts here. Abrams dishes off. A foul! But it won't matter. There was a foul on the shot, and the argument ensues as Granger got level, but St. Joseph's comes away with an exciting 81-77 win. Now, this really is close. This ball almost goes in the basket. The last thing you do is want to foul the three-point shooter. There is contact there. No foul was called. Look at how close that ball is to going in the basket. Now, has this ball gone in the basket and the foul been called? What an interesting scenario that would have been. But first of all, there was no foul called there. And secondly, the ball didn't go in. So St. Joe gets the win. And there's the wife of St. Joe's coach, Phil Martelli, at the end. Oh, my gosh. What a great finish. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Danny Abrams for Boston College and Rasid Bay for St. Joe's in overtime. St. Joe's 81-77. They will move on to the third round. It was a magnificent basketball game. Pat O'Brien in New York. All kinds of other activity going on. Phil Martelli celebrating here, the St. Joe's coach. Pat. All right, Gary, what do you think they were thinking at Hawk Hill in Philadelphia on that one? St. Joe goes to Sweet 16 for the first time since 1981. All right, here's what's going to happen right now. Iowa and Kentucky, that'll tip in about 30 minutes. We're going to send you to that game eventually. But everybody now will go to Xavier and UCLA. Great basketball here on CBS after this message and a word from your local station. flower cake from 1-800-Flowers. With 1-800-Flowers, giving someone a truly special birthday gift is a piece of cake. show you germs only epident plus has listerine ingredients it kills odor causing germs so you can get this close epident plus with listerine ingredients kill the germs kill the odor some sinus medicines can make sensitive nasal tissue feel dry and uncomfortable but Sudafed non-drying sinus has a moisturizing formula that helps keep nasal tissue feeling comfortable while it drains away sinus pressure take Sudafed non-drying sinus Double. 